Hello, Calf CWD. Thank you for watching. Um, we are packing up stuff on the trailer. Send out. This is Richard's 3x2 meter. Uh, his window is being delivered next week. Um, so the kit is being shipped out today. And he, he messaged me today. I'll tell you back to me so you're not just looking at a lot of sleepers. So he messaged me well, over the weekend. Uh, asked about, I mentioned about bottom drains because he said he's got an easy pod. I said, oh, well, are you having a bottom drain? And he, he didn't like, the well, he can't install a bottom drain. He doesn't like the thought of cutting more into the liner. He's already scared about the window. But I, I assured him that it's well worth it. It'll improve the efficiency, no end of his easy pod. Um, having the Tempest after it, the Tempest will work even better. So we're going to have a retro gravity drain sent out to him. Um, so it's it basically looks like an upside down bottom drain in the bottom of your pond um, So it pretty much works the same the only difference is you can see a bit of pipe in your in your pond It goes through the wall. So wherever he wants it to come out is gonna have to have it going through the wall um, You don't necessarily have, it, have to have it set in the middle of the pond either You can just have it at a back corner or you know, and then you can try and optimize your flow rate so that that picks up the dirt um, with it being if it was pump fed, it wouldn't have been anywhere near as efficient. It wouldn't, uh, I mean, it wouldn't have had a pump in the pond. It wouldn't look as good. So there's loads of benefits to having a bottom drain or a retro gravity drain. Um, retro, normal retro bottom drains where you have a pump in a pond. I'm not a big fan of them myself, purely because they look quite ugly. Uh, the fish, if, if it lifts up, I've heard loads of customers say, oh, I've had fish make it inside and they've ended up in the impeller. Um, so it's because you've not got a cage on the end of it it can be quite risky so if you're going to retro feed try and do it with a retro gravity drain instead uh, if you don't know where to get hold of them let me know because we sell them uh, we have did them on the swim in the, the pond in Manchester here we did, them, did it on the pond in Manchester and visiting that again soon so I'll be able to show you a video of how that one's working set up um, another thing the customers asked me about is making in one of these so can't see the camera right this is a stand for his easy pod so it screws i screwed it onto my workbench while i was building it just so it kind of made sense to me but basically there's two screws here but he will have four because his his pond will have wood here as well i don't have any wood here because i just did it to my bench and then he's got two legs there two legs there so all he's gonna have to do is just screw in screw in screw in screw in i was gonna do these on the sides like this but i thought it don't look as chunky i don't like that as much let me just show you what that would look like yeah don't know why i'm still on the camera i've got to even stand for it there we go so i don't think it looks as good like this This is just for Richard. So what you're gonna have to do, first thing you do is you screw on this bit of wood onto your pond side. Now you have to measure where you want it to sit. So I put a little line here saying I want it to sit at that level. So get one side screwed on and get the spirit level on the top of here, get the other one screwed on. So the water level in an easy pod is 585 mil from the top so from the top of the pond you want to measure down 585 and then probably take off about two to two or three centimeters however high you want your water level to be on your easy pod i mean in your pond because some people like it right to the top some people like it about an inch from the top do 585 mil and take into account that and then that's where you want to set your easy pod i had another customer say that he heard um a dealer told him that you should set 
it gravity fed but this far above the pond water level otherwise the easy pod could empty your pond um, no idea what he was taking but a gravity feed system it can't overflow because it's gravity's holding it in um, it's like the sea doesn't overflow into the land does it because gravity's holding it down so yeah that was a bit daft but yeah set your gravity set, like if this is your easy pod here you have a little lip coming out you want to set your water level to be just around about there because once this is pumping out your pumps after your easy pod the water level is going to drop slightly anyway so yeah right so that's his stand is all his sleepers are here double checked and counted them all just to be sure because uh, i found i think i found like number 32 or something i was like wait i recognized it because it was quite green one like this all the way across so um yeah double check made sure we've got everything there um, and the extra one it had just fallen off the side and it looked like it was part of another kit so i'm gonna have to be careful on that uh, we're sending this kit out today this is gonna have the glass jump guards a little one meter window and then um, that's going with the spin clean filter in that uh, the spin cleans they're not the best filters ever if you've got goldfish they'll work all right you have to get very dirty when you're cleaning them uh, you can't just clean them just by spinning it you need to empty it out every every two weeks every month really um so it's it's not as simple as it sounds they, they are all right for the first 12 months but then people start having issues bacteria and all that sort of stuff and then everyone ends up buying koi um because you get goldfish thinking oh yeah i only want goldfish pond i'll just get the cheap stuff and then you see koi in a fish shop and you're like oh that's beautiful you end up buying it and then a couple of months down the line all your fish are dying you don't know why it's because your filter's not up to the task so yeah that's all i'm going to be doing today shipping them two kits out if i've got time i'll build the big kit over there i'll build that one um that's going to have a skimmer in it and things so that's just for my peace of mind i know it's going to work but um yeah i just want to build it and it'll be good to show you a little video of of me stacking it together uh, and how easy that is so that's the one with the the big window that's the window piece there big two meter piece so yeah thanks for checking in i'm gonna get that done and then hopefully i'll get a bit more of a video done later on but if not i'll um this will be the end of this video see you later okay so i ended the other video a little bit soon so for richard's sake here is your stand so i'm just going to run you through how to piece it together now i built this top bit here and then i kind of got under it had my feet under that end and then i got it level and screwed it in from underneath that was a really awkward way of doing it so what you should do i'll just put it on a stand here and show you right so this piece here on its own none of these will have numbers you'll just have three the same size you'll have four legs or well, four legs they're all little squares and then you'll have two that go on there so i'll i'll actually number these actually it's going to make it simple uh, i've got pens it's not going to cost me anything so I'll do number one, two, three, four, five, and then you've got a load of blocks. So that's all doing it. One, two, three, four, and five. So that's the order you need to screw them in. So this one, bolt it underneath, get it level, and you're bolting it flat so it's upright, so you can get the black screws through there. Next step, once you've got that level, get number two, hold it, and screw it in matching the end of there and then instead of putting number three in, i put number four in to get number four screw it in match it up to the end of there so it looks nice and then you can see there's a bit of a bigger gap here than there is here so if, on number three you just move that to the right a bit get that nice and central and then everyone's ocd will be better then underneath here because these will be all a bit wobbly all these legs so you get so it's one two three four and then this will be number five so you're gonna hold that underneath you probably have to get someone else to hold it and just screw down here i've managed to do it myself um but yeah if it was a bit awkward and then these it's just a case of stacking two on top of each other screwing them in and then stack the next one on top screw that in get two bolts in each one and then the last level 
to get through them in as well. If you did the legs first actually and put them underneath you'd be able to just plop that on, you'd be able to plop that on top. So do the legs first, plop that on top and that'll be easier when you're screwing these into that because you can screw through this into the legs and then through that into there. So yeah, build the legs first and you'll be right. So yeah, it'll look alright that stand. Your bottom drain will come either the left or the right wherever you want to position it on the back of your pond. So this will screw on whatever side of the pond you want your filter. There you go.